it starts in the sandbox. I am putting the sand through the riddle so that it aerates because later I'm going to be compressing the sand to make the form. When you sand cast bronze, the sand always has some kind of binder in it. And this is the most ancient form of casting. The sand is bound with clay. This is sand, clay, and water. I create the pieces in the negative. I actually work directly in the mold. This is my fingers, I kind of poke my fingers and dug them into the sand. I like that these pieces seem to bubble up somehow from some unconscious or archetypal place. This piece is called Shiners. It's sunflowers with a twist. They're great. They're goofy and, and yet serious at the same time. They're totally unexpected. The foot column just popped into my head and walked around with me for a couple of years. You don't have to know that that's an homage to Broncusi. It stands on its own. But if you do, it's that much funnier and more poignant, really, in a way. The original Endless Column is, in fact, a war memorial. So then this image of these feet marching up into oblivion takes on a whole other meaning. Bronze has such a long and freighted history. It's so figuratively and literally weighty. We have dead presidents and generals, and it's been very much an instrument of glorification to power. It's considered valuable. So to be able to use it in a way that's spontaneous, that's collage-like, that incorporates drawing, painting, because I use the patinas. I'm modeling. Look at those hands, they look gorgeous. The exciting thing about bronze today is that it's only been in the last 50 years or so that we've had the alloy of silicon bronze, which can be welded and is stronger than the traditional bronze, which had lead in it. So also it was more toxic, but you couldn't create the kinds of forms that I do now. These are cast flat, and then I bend them to get the three-dimensional form here. Like I would bend, I bend this out like that, and then push that back. That way, I cold bend them, don't need heat. What I like about working this way is that I'm working directly with the metal. What I do has to do with the characteristics of metal, how it flows, instead of trying to get bronze to look like something that was done in something else. Gina seems to bring like a life force into these sculptural forms and she makes something that would at first in bronze seem very static and infuses that with energy and it makes it something that's kinetic at the same time. She's juxtaposing elements we would not normally see together and making something totally new for us and opening up our ability to imagine new things and to see the world around us differently. I fully intended to make it a palm tree, but then somehow I got the stems on and feet just seemed more open to different readings. They look like fruit. I really just discovered the plant-like nature of hands by accident because I was doing wall pieces. Then all of a sudden they started to look like plants. So then I started to make them plants. And then I started to see the connection between human beings and plants. We and trees are the only beings that are vertical, that conduct energy from heaven to earth, and that can reach out into space. Quadrupeds don't do that. 
We always think of ourselves as being identified by our faces, but really there's so much else that goes on in the body. Hands and feet, they're how we connect with the world. The feet are what connect us to the earth, and our hands are what feed us and also help us feed others. It's really exciting to just see it all together and see the pieces talking to each other. Thank you.